you mentioned the transfer market, and I d- it does feed into this. Do you, know, do you think it's actually sustainable when you look at some of these prices? And obviously, then you're in the weeds of the finance in the club, and you're looking at your financial fair play model. Can you get the players, and or at least the number of players that genuinely uh, you know you need within the kind of transfer market uh, boundaries that we're currently set? Uh, it's possible. It's definitely challenging. I think you. It, it's a balance. I think you, first of all, it just shows the importance of bringing your own players through. Uh, that is that it's the only viable way of running a football club is to have a good group of young mm. players coming into your team. But in terms of FIFA for play, yeah, we have to be smart, you have to be shrewd, and you have to be opportunistic. Yeah. Uh, you have to be ready to pull the trigger quickly. You have to know what you want, and um, you have to be strategic. And a lot of thought gets into who to approach, why they're approaching them, what are the best chances um of, of success what you don't want to do is sort of make a ton of blanket offers and and and, and you, you know got to be quite controlled disciplined yeah. um but it's definitely challenging especially with uh some of the other clubs you've seen the sort of the months they've spent uh financial fair play means we can't do that uh just yet and so we have to make sure our, our pound really has to go further mm. than a manchester city a chelsea or a liverpool what do you think about how they've spent and how they've transacted well, you know, they're, they're, for the, for their, they're both friends of mine, and, and you know, off the field, I definitely <laughs> wish them the best. They've definitely brought in some very, very good players. Uh, it's a shame it hasn't worked out uh, for them, uh, but it can, it can, it can next year. That's such a backhander. Yeah, <laughs> it's like it's bought great players. Shame it hasn't worked. No, uh, they, they definitely. Have, they, uh... they, they, you said that. No, they definitely brought in some very high quality players, and you know what? It can change on a dime. Last year we yeah. were fighting relegation. This year we're. we're, we're we're pushing towards a Champions League space. So, you know, next year, I wouldn't be totally surprised to see Chelsea pushing on. Uh, and so it, it can change very quickly. But definitely they spend a lot of money and that's, uh, you know, it, that that's a, that would those sort of sounds would be difficult mm. for us. But bringing it back into you, you know, your business of sport, what's, what's interesting um, about what Chelsea seem to have done is start really using, um, or do we, I don't know, we can call it a loophole, but it's always been there. It's just putting players on longer contracts and amortizing a transfer fee over a longer period of time to be able to then comply with financial fair play. Yeah. UEFA have already come in, I think. And, yeah, they're and, looking at it. And saying, we, you know, we're, we're not going to do that. You can from next season, know, right? From next season, I think. Yeah. And yeah. so ultimately, you know, <laughs> tying players to long term contracts for massive transfer fees. Uh, is something they've done very quickly and, and won't this be around for very long. You're a player, you're like eight years. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yes, I will do it. Right. Uh, it is until you start playing like Chelsea are right now, and then you realise you're locked into. 